Oh man, I have so many things. I feel like I could talk to you <laughs> all day because you're hitting on all of the good things that I, I love to chat about. And I, okay, let me, I want to touch on, on what you said there because it was, it was so good. I think, and now follow me again. I have, I, and I always kind of get made fun of it, but I definitely use like analogies and make connections that potentially there may not be any, but it's kind of how my brain seems to work. But one thing, for instance, you saying, you know, that sacrifice for the team or, or doing whatever you can for the team. So bear with me. So I think that if you go out and let's say like put back in that example of you're a hitter and, and it's a big moment in a game and you get the set and there's a few choices that you can make. I think you choosing what you think is best for the team is actually not what's best for the team. That's not you sacrificing what you're doing for a team. I think you, you know, whether it be doing work before being more authentic, being whatever, and then expressing yourself to like the maximum degree is you doing the most for the team. Cause I think sometimes it gets lost in translation of, Oh, I need to be doing what's best for the team. So I'm just going to do this. And mm. I don't think that that always equates, obviously at times, like it, if that means, Oh yeah, you got to get up at seven and go to practice. And that's not what you personally want to do in that moment. Yeah. Obviously you're going to do that. But I do think there's an interesting relationship between how that plays out and how you, it's almost, oh, who had said it, but it's basically the concept of, you know, you becoming your best version of yourself is what's best for the team, right? As opposed to you, you know, conforming to whatever things. And that obviously comes with, with a fine line, right? I'm not saying like, oh, just go out and think about yourself, but it's like always hold the context of if you can better yourself for the team, that's your way to, to contribute the most to, to the team. Yeah, I think that ties in with what you kind of touched on earlier, which is like this idea of being familiar with your core values. Um, because if you really take the time to reflect and step up your game in that area, being really self-aware and I guess it's like preemptive sacrifice. I don't know if this makes right. sense, but it's like already making sure that you're aligned with both your values and the team values mm -hmm. and building that habit around that idea and concept so that when you come to the point in the game, you don't have to worry about where this impulse uh, of creativity is coming from, whether it's coming from a selfish place or right. not. You already know you've like trained yourself to, to have that kind of flow into this team dynamic, what we're all building towards. Is that a fair assessment of what you're I think 100%. And I think All right, I'm back. I think why I brought it up was I, I reflect on when I was a little bit younger. And actually, the 2016 Olympics is a great example again. A lot of my decision making as a setter was based around me thinking what the coaching staff or what whatever would think was the right decision. And I think the, the intent behind that is great. Like that's obviously me trying to do whatever I can for the team or do whatever. But it's also then limiting my... Because I really want, and as a setter, I love it because it's pretty unique where I have to try and hold every piece of information that's going on in the game in my head. And then when I make a decision, I want none of it to be there. You know what I mean? Exactly what you're talking about, right? This preemptive work. And then in the moment, you can trust your decision making. And I think as I've kind of matured beyond where I was as a player in that moment, it's allowed me to see that, oh no, me actually taking in all this info and then using that information is what the coaching staff wants me to decide to do, right? It's not this singular, oh, when somebody passes you the ball, you won more and they shoot it, right? It's, okay, you have to read the play. You have to read the situation. You have to do all these other things. And I think the ability to, yeah, almost like trust those decisions comes from that preemptive work. And I think that that's, that's so well put, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And I think about that all the time in basketball and I, it's the same in every sport and as well as in the business world or day to day. There's so many right actions in the moment. So many things that could lead to the success, the ball going through the hoop or you reading, for us, reading a screen 
uh, exactly right, putting the ball here at the right moment, or instead choosing to shoot it yourself or passing to someone else. Depending on so many different variables in the game, that's going to lead to something else. One solution might be better than the other, but actually we never really know because we only see one result as opposed to right. the other one that you can choose. So completely being, again, we're coming back to this idea of being vulnerable and being in the moment and and taking responsibility for your, your actions, but trusting yourself through that process. And I think that ties in with the idea of confidence coming from prep, preparation and, and knowing what exactly is important in that moment and then just like giving into that.